Hello Pythonistas on YouTube and welcome to another Python web scraping tutorial. This is our second video and in this uh, tutorial we're going to create our very first and very simple web scraper. So we'll go over the basics. So let's get into it. So once you start web scraping you start to appreciate all the little things that the browsers do for us the web without a layer of HTML formatting, CSS styling, JavaScript execution, and image rendering. Uh, all this can look a little intimidating at first, but in this uh, tutorial, as well as the several next ones, we'll cover how to format and interpret data without the help of a browser. So this lesson will start with the basics of sending a GET request to a web server for a specific page, reading the HTML output from that page and doing some simple data extraction in order to isolate the content that we are looking for. So let's uh, talk a little about when uh, we are connecting uh, to a web server. So if you haven't spent much time in networking or network security, the mechanics of the internet might seem a little mysterious. We don't want to think about that exactly uh, the network is doing every uh, the network is doing every time we open a browser and for example go to http google.com and these days we don't have to know what's happening under the hood so in fact uh, it's a fantastic it's fantastic that computers uh, computer interfaces have advanced to the point where most people who use the internet internet don't have the faintest idea about how it works however web scraping requires stripping away some of this shroud of interface not just uh, at the browser level like how it uh, interprets all of its html css and javascript but occasionally uh, at the level of the uh, of the network connection so and to give you some idea of the interface infrastructure required to get information to your browser let's use the following example the the famous alice and bob example uh, alice let's say alice owns a web server and bob uses a desktop computer which is trying to connect to alice's service server so when one machine wants to talk to another machine uh, something like the following uh, exchange takes place like the process that we are going to talk about here so what's happening in the process is that let's say Bob's computer sends along a stream of 1 and 0 bits indicated by high and low voltage voltages on a wire these bits from uh, some information containing a header and body the header contains an immediate destination of his local routers MAC address with a final destination of Alice's uh, IP address. The body contains his um, request for Alice's server application. So the next step is that Bob's local router receives all these ones and zeros bits of information and interprets them as a packet from Bob's own MAC address and destined for Alice's IP address. His router stamps its own IP address on the packet as the from IP address and sends its, it off across the internet. And then Bob's packet traverses several intermedi intermediary servers, uh, which direct his packet toward the correct physical wired path to Alice's server. And then Alice's the server receives the packet at her IP address and then Alice's server reads the packet port destination which is almost always port 40 uh, excuse me port 80 for web applications this can be thought of as something like an apartment number for packet data where IP address is the street address in the header and passes it off to the appropriate application in this case the web server application and then the web server application receives a stream of data from the server processor this data says something like this is a get request 
uh, and the following file is requested, for instance, index.html. And then the web server locates the correct HTML files, bundles it up into a new packet to send to Bob, and sends it through its uh, to its local router for, for transfer back to Bob's machine through the same process. And there we have that's the internet. So where in this exchange did the web web browser come into play? absolutely nowhere in fact browsers are a relatively recent invention in the history of the internet when uh, nexus was released in uh, 1990 so yes the web browser is a very useful application for creating these packets of information sending them off and interpreting the data you get back as pretty pictures sounds videos and text however a web browser it just is, uh, is just code and code can be taken apart, broken into its basic components, rewritten, reused and made to do anything we want. A web browser can tell the processor to send some data to the application that handles uh, your wireless or wired interface. But many languages have libraries that can do that just as well. So let's look at it, how it's done in Python. So I'm going to create a new file in my uh, folder structures uh, and I uh, I'm by the way I'm using Python 3.5 and I'm using VS uh, Visual Studio Code as an editor editor and you can use whatever you want I hope you are prof uh, proficient with and uh, comfortable comfortable with the with the with a text editor of your choice and you know how to execute uh, Python scripts from the command line so let's create our first file. This is our very simple um, scraper. And I'll explain in a minute what we are going to do here. So let me Just type this out first. And this website is what's used in the book that I uh, showed you guys uh, in the previous video. So uh, you can use that as well. And uh, not in quotes, of course. So let's run this code. And I'm going to just step through the code. And it gets the page. And the page that we are referring to is this page. So it's, scra it's scraping this page. Gets all the HTML tags, text, title, heads, and body so run it in your uh, in your um, system or if you like to use the um, do it for command line that's totally up to you or you want to use an ID that's also perfectly fine so what it does is that it will output the complete HTML code of uh, the python scraping.com page let's go into our presentation and it gets the html code from this uh, url more accurately this outputs the html file page 1.html found in the web root slash pages directory on the server located at the domain name http uh, pythonscraping.com so why is it important to start thinking of these addresses as files rather than pages most modern web pages have many resource files associated with them these could 
the image files, JavaScript files, CSS files, or any other content that the page you are requesting is linked to. So when a web browser hits a tag such as uh, image source equal to cute kitten dot j, uh, jpg, the browser knows that it needs to make another request to the server to get the data at the file cute kitten dot jpg uh, in order to uh, fully render the page for the user. Keep in mind that our Python script doesn't have the logic to go back and request multiple files. Uh, at least not yet. So it can uh, only read the single HTML file that we requested. So how uh, does it do this? And thanks to the plain English nature of Python, the line from urllib.request import url open means that what it looks uh, like it means it looks at the Python module request found within the URL lib library and imports only the function URL open. And a note on URL URL, URL lib or URL lib2. So if you use the URL lib library in Python 2.x, uh, you might have noticed that the things have changed somewhat between URL, URL lib2 and URL lib. In Python 3.x, uh, URL, URL lib2 was renamed to URL lib and was split into several submodules URL lib request, URL lib parse, and URL lib error. Although function names mostly remain the same, you might want to note which functions have moved to submodules when using the new URL lib. Uh, URL lib is a standard Python library, meaning you don't have to install anything extra to run this example that we have just done, and contains functions for requesting data across the web, handling cookies, and even changing metadata such as headers and your user agent. We will be using URL lib extensively throughout this uh, tutorials. So I recommend that you read Python documentation for the library. Let me get back to these are uh, the library documentation. So uh, please do read. If there is some code that you don't understand, just go and uh, go through the documentation so that you understand what the what the functions and the code structure is doing so url open is used to open a remote object across a network and read it because it is a fairly generic library it can read html files image files or any other file stream with ease so we'll be using it quite frequently throughout the tutorials. So that's it uh, for this tutorial guide. I hope you have enjoyed creating a very, very simple and first web scraper. And uh, we'll get into uh, making a little more complex uh, applications uh, in the later tutorials. So hope you enjoyed it. If you liked the video, please subscribe, hit the like button, uh, do comment if you have any comment and please help me share this uh, content as well and thank you so much for watching and i uh, hope to see you in the next video thanks guys bye